One year anniversary of being sworn in uh, to this Congress. It's hard to believe it's been a year. But one of the things I came to Congress to do was to really move us towards ending uh, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. And while we look towards the 11th anniversary of Operation Enduring Freedom, I believe it's necessary to reflect on the staggering human and economic costs this country has endured over the past decade. Since 2001, we've spent nearly $635 billion on the Afghanistan war. Under, under FY 2012 figures, this equates to an average of $8.8 .8 billion a month $2 billion a week and nearly $300 million a day. With what it keeps to cost to keep this war going for a week, we could hire 45,000 more construction workers to help repair and build our own crumbling infrastructure. With what it costs to keep this war going for one more month, we could hire over 250,000 new teachers, nearly enough to hire back all of the teachers and public schools officials we've, who've lost their jobs during this great recession. And while these figures seem astounding, they don't begin to compare to the human toll that this war has taken on our active service members and military families. Last October, on the weekend of the 10th anniversary of this war in Afghanistan, I visited Arlington West in California, an incredible memorial to the men and women who died in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's truly a moving experience walking through row after row of crosses in the sand at Santa Monica Beach. As of today, 2,041 U.S. soldiers have been killed in Afghanistan and over 12,000 have been wounded. And while many of us talk about these figures here on the House floor, uh, I know many of us have even more personal experiences with families who have suffered uh, loss or illnesses or injuries of their loved ones. Fortunately, uh, I've been to Walter Reed twice uh, in the last six months, and I've seen the evidence of the sacrifice that we're asking these young men and women to bear. And I think all of us should take the time to walk the halls of Walter Reed and see the full cost that this war has taken. My own cousin, a young man of 26, was only in Afghanistan three months, and he was shot and in his leg. It's unclear whether or not he'll get full recovery of his leg. Last week, I visited one of my former employees in the city of Los Angeles, whose son, Ben, was, a, was in Afghanistan, uh, re-enlisted uh, three times to go back. Unfortunately, this last time, he's lost now both of his legs. And his future, uh, his family's future, has changed forever. Uh, you, you know, when you walk the halls at Walter Reed, you're made to remember the mothers bearing the crosses of their children armed with only the memory of the love and loss of the unique responsibility uh, that we all have to the fallen. You're reminded of the men and women who are still here and of the battles that they're going to have to fight long after they hang up their fatigues and come home. You're reminded of the struggle shared by the families, the mothers, the fathers, the sisters, the brothers, the sons and daughters of these veterans who bear the seen and the unseen scars of four, five, even six tours of duty. These scars are most evident in the recent nudes that 154 active duty service members have committed suicide in the first 150 days of this year. This is nearly one per day, a heartbreaking statistic that brings into stark relief the terrible toll of nearly 11 years of war. Mr. Chairman, we need to bring these troops home, and that's why I support uh, this amendment that provides for the safe and orderly withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan and to help bring this war to an end. A decade at war is too long. I want to thank Congresswoman Lee for raising this incredibly important issue, and I urge my colleagues to support this effort and help bring the troops home. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlewoman, gentlewoman yields back. What purpose?